Okay, before we start, I'd like to give one more quick shout out to Waterwind222. And this time I'm saying, even though I know you somewhat, I know you're writing some other stuff and whatnot, MAKE THESE DAMN THINGS LONGER! I was about ready to waste about five minutes doing chapter three, and I noticed how short it was! So this time I'm going to combine chapter 3 and 4 because they're awfully short. Okay? Let's just make them longer in the future. I know you're already like 100 plus chapters, but yeah. Thank you. And now on with story. Twilight Heart, Chapter 3, Sweet Memories. Sunlight broke through the blinds of the white plastered hospital room. Aura slowly woke up to find herself in a hospital bed, completely oblivious as to what had happened. She blinked and looked down at Shinx, who was happily curled to sleep in her lap. She smiled and pit its head as it slowly opened its eyes and looked up. Morning, sleepyhead, she chuckled. Shinx opened its eyes and leaped onto its master's arms, happy to see that she was okay. <laughs> well, someone sure is happy today, she laughed. The door to the room opened as a young nurse with pink hair walked in. She's obviously not Nurse Joy. Shut it! Oh, you're finally awake? Well, that's a relief. She smiled and walked over to open the blinds, illuminating the room with the sun's light. Aurora smiled back. Thanks. Um, where exactly am I? She asked, observing the new scenery. The nurse looked back and replied, Veilstone City Medical Center. You were attacked by a pack of rabbit Pokemon in the forest. Mariana, as I recall. Aurora gasped. That's right. I remember now! She exclaimed, flashing back to the events of the previous night, the barred fangs of the vicious wolves. So then, I'm alive? She asked, checking her body to make sure all her limbs were intact. The nurse chuckled. Well, you certainly are up and breathing, aren't you? Aura scowled at the nurse's sarcasm. Oh, relax, sweetie. I'm just teasing. You're in perfect shape, thanks to the efforts of the valiant young man. He said, folding a few discarded sheets. Aurora's eyes widened a bit. Wait, what young man? She asked in confusion. The nurse put the sheets down and put a finger to her lip. Let's see, tall, black hair, red eyes, gray slacks. Dark gray! Shut it! He's a pretty dark boy, but with sweet heart, that's for sure. So? Aurora murmured to herself in disbelief. He brought you in here last night, she replied, continuing to press and fold sheets. Oh, was all Aurora could say, still thinking of the chances. Why, do you know him? the nurse asked, curiously, and smirked a bit. Aurora reluctantly shook her head. N no, not at all, she stammered. The nurse picked up her sheets and walked out to the door. Oh, well, she sighed as she walked out of the room. Aura laid her head back on the pillow, still with one thing on her mind. Did he really save me? He shook her head and decided to rest while she could. It was early morning, and the sun had only begun to rise over the twilight dawn of Veilstone City. People and Pokemon slowly beginning to head off to work, and the city clambered with the usual morning traffic. Crackling noise came from the radio tower as they started the hit talk show Sinnoh Now. Sinnoh Now! Get starting start! I'm not in the story! Yet. Zone stood in a dark alleyway, leaning against the wall in deep thought. He was confused about this world and his past. He was also slightly worried for Aurora and Shinx. Her wounds must have healed by now. Perhaps I should check on her. He thought to himself and looked down at the ground. Below at his feet lay a shard of broken glass from a discarded window pane. He picked it up and gazed at his own reflection. Winds began to slowly blow around him as he closed his eyes and envisioned the one he wished to see. Meanwhile! Aurora got up from the hospital bed slowly, not to wake her sleeping friend who was curled up into a tight ball. She smiled at him then left to the bathroom across the room. After she was done, she went to the sink to wash her hands. She turned the faucet on and rubbed her hands under the warm water, lathering them with soap. 
She closed her eyes, and began to hum the same song she hummed back at the spring. Her voice echoed through the walls, and she began to envision a field of flowers, slowly blowing into the breeze, swaying back and forth ever so elegantly. She watched as the petals of the airborne bloom dance around her, an array of colors and beauty. Zone's eyes widened as he found himself standing in a field of flowers. A graceful melody played as they swayed back and forth with the breeze. This place, where am I? He thought to himself. He watched as he heard the melody and began to hum it himself. This place, it's so familiar. He thought. He looked up and saw something in the distance. He knew exactly what he saw. Aurora was standing there, twirling with the petals. So he approached her, wondering why she too would be in the same place. Aurora turned around and saw Zone approach her, and fell silent and stood in place. Zone? She asked in complete shock. Zone spoke not a single word, but nodded. Aurora smiled a bit and began to approach him, as the melody continued. Zone, did you... Really? She began to speak. Right as the melody died, she opened her eyes, back in the hospital restroom, and realized where she was. Zone. She clenched her chest and sighed. She looked up at the mirror, and saw the reflection of a young man standing behind her. She froze in complete fear and shock, but didn't speak a word. She spun around instantly to confront him, but found that no one was there. She looked back at the mirror in confusion to see that the reflection, too, had disappeared. I... I must be seeing things, she told herself and left the restroom to retrieve Shinx, and left to the lobby. Zone stood there with the crushed pieces of glass in his hand. The broken shard was shattered into dust and dropped to the ground. That melody, he muttered. Why do I know that melody? And why do I know that place? And why... Is that girl part of it all? He continued, and looked out at the city before him. I must know. I must know what it means. He growled as he left the alleyway, and disappeared into the dark. Chapter 4 Walking in Circles Aura walked out of the glass sliding doors that stood before her, and out into the bright new day awaiting her. She took in all the sights of the people and Pokemon going about in the bustling town. It was just as she thought it would be. Balestone City, she hummed under her breath and smiled. All right then, let's get going. We've got a gym badge to find, she exclaimed, striking a pose aside her little blue partner. Shink Shink! it called happily as it stood beside her. The two then sped off to find their next destination, laying ahead, the Veilstone Gym. Unknown to them, Zone stood hidden within the shadows, watching their every move. The Veilstone Gym. Very well, then, he muttered as he disappeared in another flash of darkness. How darkness flashes, I shall never know. Shut it! Aura and Shinx walked through the streets, exploring and enjoying all the sights around them. The whole city lit up with commerce and productivity. The department store crowded with people who were preparing for their everyday needs. They circled the town over and over, and eventually, they wound up lost. Go figure. Ugh! Aura groaned tiredly, searching for the gym. Shinx too was tired of walking. Aura stopped to rest for a second, until something caught her eye. Alone in the clearing there was a young woman, saying some sort of rock. Maybe she knows where the gym is. Couldn't hurt to ask, Aurora thought as she walked up to her. So, these are the meteorites said to be able to change its form. How convenient, the woman muttered as she studied the fallen rock. Excuse me, Aurora asked as the woman looked up and frowned. She wore a long gray and black unearthly dress, and her red hair curled back and spiked at the top, and her blue eyes glared. Yeah, what do you want? She asked, a little annoyed for being interrupted from her work. Aurora frowned. Er, I just wanted to ask if you knew where the Veilstone Gym was. The girl looked up and sighed. How the heck should I know? Now quit bothering me, kid. Can't you see I'm busy here? Oh? What exactly are you doing? Aurora asked curiously and walked up to the strange rock. 
If you must know, I'm studying the patterns of this meteorite. The girl rolled her eyes. Or I put a hand on the meteorite. You mean, like from space? She asked. The woman stood up and dusted herself off. Yes, from another world, to be precise, she explained. Aurora nodded. I see. That's really cool, miss. The woman gave a somewhat timid look, then shook her head. Just call me... Mars, she said, as she walked off. Aurora decided to part ways, too, and head back to look for the gem. Meanwhile, Zone walked into a large building and eyed the many people staring back at his dark figure. Welcome to the game corner, sir. A young woman greeted him by the door. Zone ignored her and walked on into the room, intrigued by the gamblers. Hey, kid! A voice called from behind. Zone turned around to see a gang of ruly thugs staring him down. You look like a hot shot. How about a game of cards? The man grimaced. Zone smirked. Are you sure you wish to lose? He taunted. The man grinned. We'll see who loses, kid. As he shuffled the cards and laid out the hands, Zone took a seat and took his cards and eyed them closely. The man smirked as he laid down a three of a kind of Pikachus. Top that, boy! He coaxed. Zone eyed his can carefully. He had two Pikachus, a Truby, a Glamio, and a Meryl. He then eyed the deck of cards at the table and closed his eyes. He could see her clearly. There was a set of Glamio hidden under. He could sense the future events coming towards him. He smirked and discarded all but one Glamio and took a new hand. Ready to show us what you got, kid? The biker laughed. Zone closed his eyes and smirked. If you insist. He said as he laid out a flush of Glamio. The biker and his gang eyed in awe and shock. How did you? This is impossible! Zone stood up and waved his hand behind his back. Better let next time, kid. As he left the game corner and stepped outside, his eye caught a glance of a young girl he was too familiar of walking towards his way. Zone smirked and disappeared into the shadows once more. Aura continued on, holding shanks and stood at a sign that pointed in all directions with small print. It's hopeless, she sighed, dissatisfaction. You know, nothing succeeds until you take action, a dark voice called from behind. Aura's eyes widened, and she spun around to the familiar voice. Zone? Zone smirked. Expecting someone else? He said sarcastically. Or slightly blushed. No, it, it's just... What are you doing here? And did you really save me? Zone ignored her and pointed off to the right, and Aurora stared at him blankly. If you're looking for the gem, it's over there, he replied as he lowered his arm. Aurora smiled and hugged him. Thanks, I've been looking all day, she said happily. Zone gave her a disgusted look at the hug but slightly smirked when Aurora jumped off in embarrassment. I can take you there if you want. That is so you don't get lost again, he grinned. Aurora blushed in embarrassment. Okay, okay, so I got lost, I admit it. She frowned and began to walk with him. Zone eyed her as they walked. So you hold the key to the answers, girl. I guess I have no choice but to follow her until I truly know for sure, he thought. As they walked off into the distance, their next destination, Maylene's gym. The pressure's on now as Aurora gets ready to face off against Maylene for her next badge. Will she be able to defeat the gym later, or will Maylene's fighting spirit overcome? Your questions will be answered in Chapter Five: Showdown of Strength.